One of the things I love most about the game of baseball is that everybody in baseball has to come to the plate. If you're in that lineup, you can't avoid your at-bat. It's coming. If you're in the field, eventually the ball is going to find you. I, I remember the most important game I had played up until that point when I was a young guy in high school. And our first postseason game that I was going to play in, and I was slated to bat eighth in that game, and I was dreading the eight hole coming up, and I, I just knew. You know, there's nothing I can do to avoid that. Everybody in baseball is eventually told, hey, you're up. And you've all been there. I've been there. I've seen it in my players where you tell that kid, hey, you're up. And immediately all of these emotions and thoughts begin to wash over them. We're in a series here at the Baseball Church about the life of Moses. And we're doing that in nine innings. And we're entering the top of the third inning today. We've seen Moses... Uh, at his birth, as God is, is using, will use and calling him to lead the nation of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. We've seen Moses uh, making excuses, making errors. And today we're going to see when it's finally the time when Moses is told, hey, dude, you're up. It's time to go. Now, I just want to share with you three things today from this story. Uh, we're in Exodus chapter four a little bit and mainly in chapter five, spilling over just a tad into chapter six as we look at this episode in the life of Moses. just want to share three things with you that I think Moses experiences here and would seem to be pretty helpful for us as we are maybe sent into different situations. So I want you to think about what it is that God has sent you or called you to do that maybe right now uh, you're not totally sure of. And uh, you know, maybe you're a little bit leery and maybe you're not uh, feeling like, oh, you know, I, I'm not even sure I want to do this. Moses, if you will uh, remember the story, if you've been with us and I'll catch you up, if not, Moses was a guy who was born uh, a Hebrew. He, he was one of the, with God's chosen people. He's one of the nation of Israel. He's born a Hebrew, but he was raised in the Egyptian court. He during, was born during a time when uh, the Israelites were in slavery uh, to the Egyptians, and the Pharaoh decided that he did not want any more uh, Hebrew boys to be, I guess, given life. And so he decides he's going to kill them all, uh, and Moses was one of them. Instead, his mother is able to hide him, and he is found by the Egyptian princess, who later takes him in as an adopted son. He's raised in the Egyptian court, and uh, so he's raised as an Egyptian. Eventually, he gets to the point where he understands this. these are not really my people. I'm really a Hebrew. And so he has sympathy for his people who are enslaved by the Egyptians. He goes out one day and he sees an Egyptian slave master beating a Hebrew slave. And something in him clicks, I guess. Something in him flips a switch. And he decides to take matters into his own hands. And he beats to death that, he, that Egyptian slave master. Well, of course, he's, he realizes I've done something that I'm going to get in trouble for. And so he buries that Egyptian in the sand and figures that nobody will know. Well, the next day, he is uh, again amongst the, uh, the Hebrew slaves, and he finds two of them fighting. And he says, guys, you, these are your own people. You're not supposed to fight your own people. You need to stop. And, and one of them says, well, you know, first of all, who are you uh, to tell us what to do? And then are you going to do to us what you did to that Egyptian? And so it's found out, obviously. Moses knows that people know. And he runs off into the wilderness, spends 40 years there in the wilderness, and it's then that God shows up to him in Exodus chapter 3 in the form of a burning bush that's not consumed. And he says, God says to Moses, I have heard the cries of my people. I am going to do something about it. I'm going to rescue them from slavery. And you, Moses, are the guy who's going to lead that effort on the human side. And Moses, of course, says, no, there's no way. I, you know, I can't, you don't even, God, I, you must not understand uh, who you're dealing with and what I've done. And God says, look, I'm not putting up with any of your excuses. It's time to go. And so what we get at the end of chapter 4 and the beginning of chapter 5 is Moses being told, hey, dude, you're up. It's your time in the lineup. And so three things that I want to share with you that I think based upon all that background that maybe you can understand what Moses is dealing with. So think of a, a, a thing right now, a person, an assignment, if you will, from God that, that you're feeling as if, man, there's no way. I can't, I can't do this. You know, this is too difficult or I'm not the right person or you know, there's no way that this is going to work out. So three principles here from the life of Moses that I just want to kind of give you and maybe they'll, maybe they'll help you. First of all, for whatever it is that God has said, hey, you're up. Uh, number one, you might not feel ready. Uh, you know, you look at Moses and, and, and he has this conversation with God in, in chapters three and four of Exodus. 
and and he doesn't feel ready in any way. In fact, he, he basically just tells God, look, you've got the wrong guy. You know, if you think of it on the field, what would make you feel ready for that big moment? You know, maybe maybe it's one more round of BP, or it's one more day of fungos, or it's one more bullpen that I could throw, That you know, and that would finally – uh, make you feel ready. Well, you know, part of that discounts the training you've done all along the way. If you've taken it seriously, if you've been doing your work, uh, maybe you're a little more ready than you feel like. You know, off the field, uh, the daily work of walking with the Lord, of understanding uh, His Word, of repenting of and learning from our sinful mistakes, all of that stuff is so huge. And sometimes we don't feel ready because we, we maybe we haven't done that work. Maybe we haven't been walking with the Lord and we realize, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm truly, I, I don't feel ready for this because I don't know the Lord well enough. You, you might not feel ready when you're up, but, but God can make you ready. I'll tell you that God can make you ready. There've been times in my life, and I'm sure many of you who are watching this times in your life where you didn't feel ready for something, but then you look back on all that God had done in your life up to that point, And you realize that God was making you ready. You may not feel any different, but you were different because of what God has done. So, you know, the first thing you might feel like Moses, you, you might not feel ready for that moment. I remember striding up to the plate in that particular game that I mentioned earlier. I'm not sure I felt ready for that game. I was so nervous. I was, I was a nervous wreck at school all day long. My friends are, are trying to calm me down a little bit, but I didn't feel ready. But as things turned out, I think I was more ready than I realized. So that's the first thing. You might not feel ready. Secondly, you might not actually be ready. You, you know, you, you may not feel ready, number one, but, but maybe, number two, you might not even be ready. Uh, sometimes those moments come for us. Sometimes we're up before we're actually ready. Now, in, on the field, this, this can kind of be cruel, quite honestly. I mean, this can be one of those things where a coach puts a player in against a pitcher, and they have, they have no chance. I mean, it, you know, the kid coming to the plate obviously cannot hit that fastball that that guy is throwing or – uh, you know, you're put on the mound in a situation where there, there's just no way. I mean, these guys are going to light you up. Or you're, you're playing a, an, an important position, and you're, maybe you're a catcher or a shortstop, and you're trying to handle a, you know, a defensive assignment, and you literally are just not ready for it. You're not physically ready. You, you're not skill-wise. You're not ready. And everybody knows that there's no chance right here. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what you do in this situation. You're simply not ready. And, and to be honest with you, uh, you know, that, that can be a little bit unfair if a coach does that to you, obviously. We, we recognize that. That's an unfair kind of assignment. Uh, honestly, uh, you know, when, when that happens on the field, I, I think in, in a lot of cases probably the coach doesn't recognize this guy, he's not ready for this, and there's nobody that can help it. You know, that's a very miserable, lonely feeling when you're on the field. You know you're not ready. The coach knows you're not ready. Everybody in the stands knows you're not ready. And yet the ball finds you. Yet your time, you know, at bat comes up because you're in the lineup that day. Uh, you know, on on the field, you're on your own. That's just the way that it is. I mean, you, you know, the coach can't come up there and help you swing the bat or or stand out there and make sure that you know how to work through the footwork of fielding the ground ball or or stand on the mound with you and and boy, just get you through throwing those pitches to that tough hitter. On the field, you're on your own. Now, this is where things are different, though. This is where the parallels run out between on the field and off the field, because off the field, things are different. If you know the Lord off the field, let me tell you this, you don't even have to be ready when your time comes up, because when God puts an assignment in front of you, even if you're not ready, it's not to embarrass you. Sometimes coaches do that to us. I'm not, I really don't know why. I, I don't understand it. Sometimes coaches intentionally embarrass us on the field to make us feel bad, look bad, or whatever. But God's purpose is not that. When God puts an assignment in front of you, even if you're not ready, it's not to embarrass you. It's, but it, it, instead, it's to get you to depend on Him in a way that you've never done before. When we're not ready, when we're scared, and let me just tell you, I was, like I said, scared to death walking up to the plate. I have been scared to death off the field of other assignments that I've done. Uh, even, even recently, you know, becoming a head coach, it's like, God, what are you doing? I'm not sure that I'm ready for that. In fact, I know I'm pretty well not ready for that. But, but when, when you're not ready, when you're scared, uh, but over and over, God, God has told us uh, in his word, don't be afraid. Guess what? When God has told us those things, even if he knows and we know, and it seems like everybody else knows, we're not ready and we're scared to death. 
God then can step in and help us because He has commanded us not to be afraid. Why should we not be afraid? Because in our fear, God has promised that He will be with us over and over. He's told us He will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He's also told us that in our weakness, God will exchange our weakness and instead give us His strength. It's not that He just makes us stronger so that we now don't need Him. No, He gives us His strength. So there's, there's, there's this point that we reach off the field when we walk with God and we say, Lord, I'm, I'm not ready for this. God, I can't handle this. There's no way that I can walk through this. And God is saying, hey, what? You know what? You're up. And guess what? I will be with you and I will give you my strength, strength that you don't have. I will be ready when you're not, God says. And so so you you may not feel ready, number one. Number two, you might not be ready, but that time is still coming up. Uh, and then thirdly, and, and this is kind of where we'll end today. Uh, thirdly, you might not succeed at first. Moses goes to Pharaoh and is quickly ushered out the door. Now, this is where I want to focus on Exodus chapter 5. And I'm, I'm going to read several of these verses here. In fact, we'll read through the entire chapter. But I want you to follow with me. If you've got your Bible, this is huge because we've kind of touched on these things of, of preparing Moses, and now he's actually up. And he goes to the Pharaoh, and it doesn't go right at first. Now, you know, you would think that if God is sending him, that things are just going to be smooth sailing, and Moses is going to have no problems whatsoever. And that's not how it goes down. Look in verse 1. Later, Moses and Aaron went in and said to Pharaoh, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go so that they may hold a festival for me in the wilderness. Okay, God has said you're going to go and, and you're going to lead my people out of slavery. And so it ought to be pretty easy at this point, right? Hey, God told me to do this. This is my mission from God. Hey, I'm going to go and take care of it. But Pharaoh respond, responded. Pharaoh doesn't respond, by the way, with, Oh, hey, no problem. Absolutely. The, you know, your God said that. Fine. What he says is, Who is the Lord? Who? What? I, I, you know, I'm not listening to him. Who is the Lord that I should obey him by letting Israel go? I don't know the Lord. And what's more, I will not let Israel go. Boom. <clears throat> Basically, get out. They answered, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go on a three-day trip into the wilderness so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, or else he may strike us with plague or sword. Then the king responded in verse 4, Moses and Aaron, why are you causing the people to neglect their work? Like, you're being a distraction here. These people got work to do. Go away. Get to your labors. Pharaoh also said, look, the people of the land are so numerous, you would stop them from working. Get out. It doesn't go well for Moses. He's given this assignment by God. His turn comes up in the lineup. The ball is hit to him at shortstop or in center field or wherever, and it doesn't go well. Uh, it would seem that he dropped the ball. It would seem that, God, you know, God, what are you, what are you doing? I thought you, you said this was going to be fine. You said this was going to work out. God, you said this was my assignment that, that you gave me. God, this is the person you put on my heart. This is what the scripture says I'm supposed to be doing. It's got to work out perfectly. But it doesn't always do that. Uh, the scripture goes on. That day, the Pharaoh commanded the overseers of the people, as well as their foremen, don't continue to supply the people with straw for making bricks as before. They must go and gather straw for themselves. And what happens is this gets worse for the Hebrews. Not only is Moses told, no, you're not going to lead these people out to this festival because I know what you're doing. You're not going to, to escape here. And I'm going to make it more difficult on the people because you have come to me and said, let the people go. Man, it is falling apart around Moses. I mean, he's down 0-2 in the count, and this guy has blown two fastballs right by him, and it doesn't seem as if anything is going to work out. And so the, the Pharaoh basically says, no, you're not leaving, and I'm going to make life more miserable for the Hebrews. And the, and the Israelites basically say, look, we're doing all we can. And in this version that I have in verse 17, the Pharaoh says, no, you're slackers. He tells them that you're slackers. So now they're being insulted. Uh, that's why you're saying, let us go sacrifice to the Lord. And he says in verse 18, now get to work. No straw will be given to you, but you must produce the same quantity of bricks. Uh, it, 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 it couldn't seemingly get any worse for Moses. He didn't feel ready. He told God that. He really wasn't ready. He knew it. And yet he sent anyway. And he goes and he tries this, and it doesn't succeed at first. And then the Israelite people who are kind of in charge, or at least the foreman of, of this particular work crew, uh, they saw that they were in trouble when they were told, you cannot reduce your daily quota of bricks. When they left Pharaoh, they confronted Moses and Aaron, who stood waiting to meet them. May the Lord take note of you and judge, they said to them, because you have made us reek in front of Pharaoh and his officials, putting a sword in their hand to kill us. Now imagine that for just a second. 
you're doing all you can. You're, you're, you're simply saying, all right, Lord, this is, I, I feel like you've led me to this. <clears throat> I don't feel ready. In fact, I know I'm probably not ready, but I'm up. And so I'll go and it falls apart. And here's what Moses says to the Lord. Moses went back to the Lord and asked, Lord, why have you caused trouble for this people? God, what, what, that doesn't make any sense. And why did you ever send me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has caused trouble for this people, and you haven't delivered your people at all. Wow. You ever felt that way? You ever felt like God, you know, okay, I mean, you know, I told you. God, I told you so. I told you I didn't feel ready. I got it. You knew I wasn't ready. What are you doing? Almost like the player who's put in to face the 90-something mile an hour fastball, and he is just coming out of Little League. He can't do it. And he looks at the coach, and he's like, wow. You knew? Why are you doing this to me? And this is where we get God's promise, and this is what you don't need to miss. It starts in verse 1 of chapter 6. And he says, the Lord, here's what the scripture says, The Lord replied to Moses, Now you are going to see what I will do to Pharaoh. He will let them go because of what? Because of my strong hand. He will drive them out of this land because of my strong hand. Do you see what God's point is? You might not feel ready. You might not be ready. You might not succeed at first, but that's when it's time to lean into the God who has sent you and who is capable of having the success, the God who put you in the lineup in the first place. God says, you now are going to see what I am going to do to Pharaoh. I will get these people out of there. In fact, Pharaoh will drive them out. He will be glad to see them go because of what I will do. Do you understand this wasn't about Moses at all? Do you understand that your assignment when God says you're up isn't about you at all? It's about God getting glory because of what he will and what he can do. Moses would later go back to Pharaoh. And we'll see that as we come up, as we move forward in this series. He will go back to Pharaoh, and it's not Moses now who is standing there confident. It is Moses who is standing there presenting what the Lord will do. Moses was probably never ready. Moses never felt ready. Moses didn't succeed at first, but through all that, he learned to trust in God, and that's the whole point. You and I are not ready to live the life that God has called us to live, to face the things that God has put in front of us, but God can and God will be with us, and He will show us the way. It's, it's, it seems like an impossible task for Moses. He was trying to deliver a people from their bondage. And guess what? He couldn't do it. God had to do it. Don't you see the preview of Jesus? We're in bondage. God's, God's people are in bondage. The people that God has created are in bondage to sin. And we can't get out of it. We try all these things. Let me follow the rules. Let me do all these right things. Let me try to make up for it. And God says, no, none of that. In fact, God says, I'm going to have to do it for you. And so he sends his son, Jesus, to live a perfect life, the life that we couldn't live, to die a sacrificial death for us, the one, the death that we deserve, and to be raised again to conquer the enemy that gets us every single time, which is death. I mean, what a great story. What a great truth. What a great principle. You might not feel ready. You might not be ready. Things might not go your way at first. You might not succeed at first. But God will do what God has said that He will do. You can trust Him. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that we can trust you, even when we don't feel ready, even when we're not ready, and even when we don't succeed at first. Lord, help us to lean into you. We thank you for the great preview that we get of Jesus Christ. Lord, we, we could not solve our own problems, and so you did for us. Thank you for his life, for his death on the cross, for his resurrection to conquer death. May we live for him each day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that God blesses you on and off the field. We'll see you next time, church. Thanks again for joining us for the Baseball Church. If you'd like more information about Baseball Pastor Ministry, check out BaseballPastor.com. You'll see our blog and links to various resources. We'd love to connect with you there or on our various social media platforms. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again for being with us. See you next time.